now it's working. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not very good, huh? All right, so here we have this unit that I'm working on, and it wasn't cooling. And when I first got here, I had my 27, 26 volts coming into Y and C, but I didn't have it here at the contactor. And then as soon as I pushed in the contactor, it actually finished pulling itself back in. So yeah, that's right. I started pushing it, and before I could get it seated down on the contact points, it sucked itself back in. So that means, since I didn't have power here and there, that as soon as I pushed it in, it received power, it energized, which is very strange. So I looked at the schematic, I found out that this is the compressor lockout. I'm guessing that somewhere between here and here, the signal goes through the compressor lockout. I'm thinking it's gonna be this compressor lockout board instead of maybe being a low pressure or high pressure switch that could have potentially done that. So I'm gonna to wanna to verify that. And if I can verify that this thing was between here and there, and also these pressure switches which are on these wires are gonna be in there as well, then I'm gonna go ahead and probably order one of those. So I wanna just make sure of everything. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna trace all these wires back out, figure out where they're all going, and that's how I'm gonna confirm it. First, I'm gonna shut the power off, because I don't wanna get shocked. This is 480, so that would be horrible. I think it's also going to maybe like a freeze sensor over here. So here I've got my schematic. Blue and black are my low pressure switches. FPT, what is, let's see, what is FPT? FPT is freeze protection thermostat. That's what FPT is. So that comes directly out of the logic, which is the CLO, which is the compressor lockout. And that's gonna be that part that I was telling you that I'm gonna replace. So right here, I come out of the CLO into my, looks like to be high pressure switch. It's going in there. So high pressure switch comes back right here and it goes that way towards my freeze protection switch. And then it comes back from my freeze protection switch right there into my low pressure switch. Goes through my low pressure switch and my low pressure switch comes back right there to my contactor. And then what actually happens with this, it's pretty stupid if you ask me, but we've got Y1 that starts here as blue. It goes as blue and it goes all the way across here, all the way across the unit, right here, blue. We've got blue coming, you see, blue. Then it has this jumper that jumps across back and comes back into this gray right here. And then gray goes all the way back over there. Yeah, that's my Y circuit, by the way. Gray, it's coming back, gray, here, into my compressor lockout. So the signal Y1 goes into here, comes out of here, into my high pressure switch, back into my freeze protection switch, back into my low pressure switch, and then into my contactor. So it had to be right here that I was not getting power through. Uh, now it's working. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's not very good, huh? Okay, hold on, something not good. Something happened. What happened? Why the hell did that do that? That was not cool, you guys. We've got us a weak freaking, uh... We've got a weak motor, yo. That's really weak. Damn it, boy. Oh, man. We're gonna have to order one of those. Yeah, we're gonna have to order one of these motors. This thing has got issues. Wow. See, I'm glad I turned it off and turned it back on. Okay, you can stop. Thank you.
So this turns good. Ain't nothing wrong with that. As far as this thing goes. I mean, was it too tight? Come on, get up there. Uh, I don't pinch my fingers. I don't want to pinch my fingers. No? It's not too tight. That thing's just weak. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna verify voltage. I wanna make sure I got good voltage going to it. I'm gonna test my terminals, make sure I got good voltage and no loss anywhere. Testing between this one and this one. And when I do that, watch the meter. I get 300, 309 volts. See, see that? 309 and now look. Over here, I get 480. So over here, I'm getting 480. And over here, I'm only getting 309. So I've got a bad fan relay also. I wonder if having the bad fan relay caused my freeze protection switch to trip so many times that it caused my compressor lockout to activate. Bet you that's what happened. Or it interrupted the circuit somewhere. Low pressure switch, freeze protection switch, high pressure switch maybe, not likely, but I bet you the fan motor bad relay caused this to lock up, do its job, work properly. But that's the problem the whole time. All right, so we're gonna replace this damn thing right here. That's what we're gonna do. It is a 24 volt relay. So I went and picked up one of these. I did have a um, another one on the truck. It was a 90340 relay, you know, the truck stock one. But it didn't have any ratings for 480 volts on it, so I didn't want to use it. So I went and got this one. One wire at a time, making sure the power's off, of course, and testing it. And so this is very important. So, you know, when you're putting these wires on, put them on there. If they just, like, slip on, like, that one's a little tight. You know, so it's okay, I guess. But if they just, like, you know slip on and they'll slip right off like that you really need to you, you really need to get in there and squeeze it down a little bit okay so not too much but just a little bit man take some pride in your work see it's still not good enough take some pride in your work and do a good job is what i think Make sure your connections are tight. There. That's better. See? That's better. Make sure your connections are tight. Especially on high voltage stuff. The more current going through it, the more important it is to be tight. So when you go one wire at a time, then you're left with something looking like this, just dangling, and then your old one sitting there waiting to come out. And while we're already here, we might as well test this capacitor, see if it's weak or not. Test the capacitor, you gotta take one side, one wire off. This one's a 7.5. Check for a microfarad. It's weak. Got my new 7.5 off my truck. I'm gonna go ahead and bench test them, since I got them right here. So we're set on microfarad. 5.7 for the old one. Seven point five six for the new one. That's a good new capacitor. All right, then we got our new capacitor in. We got our new relay in. We're ready to apply power. I believe, and I bet you. Ah, see that? That's very nice right there. That's very nice. I bet you this thing is stuck. I bet you the contact points on this are stuck. Yeah, looks like maybe I'm wrong. 
well, whatever. Whether it's just stuck closed or pitted very badly, it was done and it needed to be replaced. And I bet you, it works now. We have no more problems out of this compressor lockout switch. It's okay. It locked out because of what was going on over here. So, that's going to do it for this one, this video. Hope you guys liked it. Um, if you guys got anything good out of it, please go ahead and subscribe. It does help me a lot on the channel. So, if you guys got anything good out of it, I appreciate it. Subscribe and like it. And uh, if you like this content, keep tuning in. Thanks. Here's something funny everybody seems to do. What do you do when, you're, when, you're, uh, when your screws are stripped and they, they no longer, you know, they no longer hold the panels in? Oh, just go over here. Not bad, huh?